Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our billing uh, session this morning. Sorry for the slight delay. We're a little bit of a technical difficulty, but I think we're we're okay now. Um, on the uh, GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar panel, you should see a handout section. Uh, ho I'm hoping that the handouts were sent to you earlier so that you had a chance to print them out. Uh, there should be four documents there, uh, the PowerPoint as well as a billing introduction, billing setup, and billing workflow uh, sections. So if you can have those printed out uh, while we go through, this will um, help you with the information that we're going to be talking about today, and you can take notes in there as well. Uh, my name is Jeanette, and I'll be your instructor for this morning. We're probably going to go a little over the hour that has been designated for this session uh, because we are going to take a look at a few things in setup as well as covering all of the options that you have uh, for workflow inside billing. Now the slide here says billing and contracts. There are some things that I'm going to point out to you in the contracts module that you should be aware of to, in order to get billing uh, to work properly. All right. So our agenda then is going to be to look at the features in both uh, BL and CN. Uh, I also want to review the billing and contract data files uh, with you just so that you're familiar with the slight differences between the, the, the core stage 300 applications and these two modules. Uh, we're going to jump into the software after that, and we're going to take a look at some of the settings. We're not going to dwell too much on that. I uh, want to look at the tables inside billing and a couple of things inside contracts, and then we'll jump into the workflow side of billing. So what we're looking at first then is the introduction section. And on uh, page one of that intro um, uh, handout are the billing features. Uh, so you're going to use this application, if you've purchased it, to produce your cost-based, contract-based invoices um, for jobs that have been set up to use the contract billing, and then quick bill um, to, just to enter on-the-fly type of information that you want to um, put into an invoice, again, to send out through billing. A quick bill um, is not a contract job. Uh, so these might be small jobs that don't require a specific type of invoice, whereas the cost-based and the contract-based, uh, those are the two types of, of contract invoicing that you can do that will produce uh, some crystal-type um, invoice forms. Now, for both cost-based, contract-based, uh, we've got markup and rate tables. Uh, Quick Bill can access the add-on tables if you need it, need them to. Um, all three of them, excuse me, the cost-based and the quick bill can, can um, access the standard items that can be set up inside billing. All three of these, you can change your invoice before you actually final print. So you can view the invoices in either a preview mode, draft mode, um, and then in order to get that invoice over to accounts receivable, you have to do a final uh, print of that invoice and then post it before it will actually go over to accounts receivable, which, is, which in turn hands that invoice off to general ledger, job cost, and then totals uh, come back through into contracts. Um, we can also reprint the form if you need to, so uh, these are stored after you've posted in uh, certain files within billing and you have an option to bring that invoice back up and reprint if you need to. Um, the multiple invoice formats, you have access to quite a few um, invoice designs that come standard with, with Sage 300 CRE. In addition to that, you can have multiple invoices on a specific contract. So you can have one contract that might print some items uh, with one type of a uh, cost-based invoice design and others uh, that print differently. So we can combine all of that um, into one contract um, if, if it's actually needed uh, that way. Now the files for billing are slightly different. This is on page two. 
um, of your introduction handout. There is a master file in billing, but the only thing that's in there is BL settings. Billing does not have any record types like customers or contracts or jobs like the other applications do. Um, it interfaces with those modules to pull information, uh, but it doesn't store any of that information within billing itself. It's looking outside itself for that type of information. The new.blt file is for cost-based um, contracts. So when you are entering information in accounts payable or payroll or job cost to a job that is a contract-based job, it will send information if you've got the interface turned on. It will send information over for the time and material billings. So the, this would be your cost-based contract. Once that information is generated, um, and, and I'll point this out when we get in the software, if you can think of generate WIP the same as post, um, it, this will make more sense. Uh, once that new.blt file has all the information generated out of it, the cost base information will go into the unbuild.blw file. <clears throat> From there, um, that's what you're going to generate an invoice off of, and then you'll print the inv invoice from there, and then you'll post. The information then goes from unbuild BLW to build.blw. And if you're reprinting an invoice, that's where you will reprint from. Um, if you move into uh, information, uh, we have a history.blw, but that's uh, this is also for the information that's being sent to billings, uh, billing from a contract-based project. So at the time that you post in the other modules, the system doesn't know. All it knows is that the, jo is that the job is a contract-based bill, billing. It doesn't know if it's contract-based or cost-based. So it sends everything. Once you, uh, you generate and you post your cost-based work in progress, then it's going to send the, the information that is for a contract-based project over to history. Now, for the contract-based um, invoices and the quick bill, you have unbuild.bli and build.bli. So unbuild is for your um, uh, invoices that you've generated but you haven't posted yet. As soon as you post, it will send that information over to the build file. And again, you can access that file to reprint invoices if you need to. The standard file holds all of your um, standard items, your markup tables, your rate tables, add-on tables, and the invoice uh, formats. <clears throat> so those invoices and those tables are not stored in the master file. They're stored in the standard file. Now, just briefly, the CN features, this is what links billing um, and job cost together so that billing knows um, that, that these jobs are contract-based bills. So um, it, it, it's kind of the interface there. Um, and I'm not going to dwell too much on this because we, we're, we're really focusing on the billing Side of it, but you do need to have a contract set up in CN in order to produce the uh, cost-based or the contract-based invoices, and those jobs have to be marked as contract uh, billing jobs. Now, the files in contracts, they are different, um, just like they're different in billing. Uh, you have active files that keep track of the contract the, the transactions for that contract, and then any adjustments. Uh, there's not a master file for contracts. You have a settings uh, file um, that holds the, um, when you go into CN settings, very small amount of, of information is in that settings.cns file. The standard.cns file is if you set up uh, like a template or a model contract that you're going to use to copy over to active contracts when you get started. Um, if you're not doing any standard or template or model type contracts, you won't have um, anything in that file. 
Okay, so let's go ahead now. We're going to jump into the software, and we're going to start with billing setup. So I want you to, to go to the billing setup uh, handout. Okay. There is a little bit of information in settings. So in billing under file, company settings, BL settings, probably the important things to um, verify is that you have your interface turned on to accounts receivable. And I would set this to automatic. Uh, in, within the revenue modules, because they are all tied together, Billing flows to AR, which flows to, back to contracts, which billing then picks up information from contracts. Those three modules should all be set to automatic for each other. So I would double check that billing has an automatic uh, post, and then I would go to AR and make sure that it has an automatic post, and then go to um, CN make sure that and, and job cost, make sure that all of those have automatic uh, interface or posting. Because once you post in billing, there's no reason for it to stop in AR and wait for you to post there before it goes to job cost or GL or contracts. Make sure that all of that has a um, has an automatic setting. Okay. The other thing I would check is under print invoice options. You might want to go ahead and check this uh, field right here that allows you to to do final printing of your cost-based invoices with a status of pending. Otherwise, that's an extra step that you have to run to approve it before you can final print it. Um, and I would imagine that you're all you know, printing out drafts or previews of these invoices. So at the time that you're ready to do a final print, um, it should be OK that the status is set to, uh, to pending. Okay, there are other screenshots of the other tabs um, for settings in your handout. Uh, most of those are, are, should probably just be left at the default. Um, I want to go ahead now and start looking at the tables. So again, um, in your setup section on page 6, I want to talk about markup tables. Now, before I actually go in there, I want to show you something here under File, Company Settings, Custom Descriptions. There is one place, one table that you should take a look at and address before you go in to set up um, your tables. And where are we? Eh. Find the name of the file. I'm not seeing that that field listed on here. Hold on. I was expecting to see that. So let's look under setup here for a second under markup tables. What I'm looking for is these available markups right here. And I would have expected to see that here under custom descriptions. Did I miss the bees? Let's see. There. Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here under BL Markup, notice that there is a drop down here on the side. So you're, you'll come in here to Custom Descriptions and you'll click in the description uh, field and that will activate the Customize List button. And if you click on that, these are our markups that's, that we've added to the sample, uh, the construction sample data. Um, I believe these are blank when you uh, go when you go into your own company. So you may want to check here first to make sure that um, there are some tables. 
Because if you, if you take a look at the bottom of page 6, there's, there's none listed in that bottom sc uh, screenshot. Okay, so we've gone in in the sample data and we've added some different types of markups that we might want to do on a cost-based invoice. So that when we come in over here under Setup Markup Tables, they show up here under Available Markups. So what you're, you're assigning here is, is anything or any type of a markup that you want to apply to any of the six cost types that will come across on the items that you're entering in accounts payable or payroll or job cost. Now, you need to note that on each item in the contract setup, if you take a look at page 8 in your setup manual, there's a note at the bottom, circle that. Each contract item can only have one markup table. However, that table can have markups for all six of the different cost types. So in this example, if we're looking at labor, we could go ahead and put in a federal markup. Just highlight that. And all you do is click, double click it or click the arrow to move it over to the markup side and then lock in a percent and then that will show up over here. So if I put this table ID, markup table ID, on any of my contract items um, inside the contract setup, it's going to apply a 10% markup to all the labor that comes across. I can additionally add something for material. So if I want to add some type of an overhead, I could do that, maybe 5% overhead, and that comes across. Okay. So any of these types I can, um, I can add a, a markup to. Now be careful when you create a new markup, you want to make sure that you give it a name and then an effective date. Make sure that this date is far enough back in the past that any transactions that you are bringing across um, will, will be at least that date or newer. Okay. Otherwise, if any contract amounts that you have set up um, that are before that date will not, um, will not generate or will not, um, excuse me, it won't apply the, the markup to those items. And then if you want this markup table to stop at a certain time, you put in a through date. And then what happens is at once you hit that date and go beyond, then the items will not, uh, th those markups will no longer be applied to the items that come through. All right, now this table that we're talking about let me go into contracts here, and I'll show you where that, that markup table would go. It goes on the item level, it goes on the billing tab, and it goes right here. And see that there's only one markup table field, and this is per contract item. Okay. All right, the next table we have is the rate table. Now, the difference with the rate table is that each item can have um, up to six rate tables, one for each, each cost type. So when you create your rate table, it'll ask you what cost type does this rate table belong to. And so you will pick the rate table. Maybe it's material. You'll give it an ID. and an effective date. Then you click the insert button and it brings it in. Again, if the rates are supposed to go through a, an ending date, be sure you put that in here. 
Otherwise, this, this will continue to um, build these rates until you either change the table or uh, change the contract to use a different table. Now on this table, what you have to set up in these first two boxes on, uh, on the top, you have to set the criteria for the item to match in order for the rate to be used. So as an example, if this is material and you want to, maybe you're passing through all the material costs, you're not gonna you know, charge them uh, any different. You might be marking up the material instead, but the actual cost, you want to pass it through from AP over to the billing module. And so what the criteria here could be, uh, we could make it by vendor. Just double click to, uh, or use the arrows to get it over. Um, it might be, let's see, let me go back over here. It might be by job as well. So certain vendors, certain jobs. And then down below where it says available field columns, this is what you're what you're going to be changing. So I'm going to say we're going to we want to pass the cost through for this particular table. And then to set the table up, I simply click on the table button. And then here I can tell it with an asterisk. I can say, "Oh, send all for 18001, that's my job number." and then I check the box. So in this case, any material that I buy for this particular job, regardless of the vendor, I'm gonna pass that cost through over to billing. Now I might also need to set up, let's do a labor one, and let's call this uh, class labor. And we'll give it an effective date. Okay. And then we'll call this. Okay. Now in this case, I might this I might have different billing rates by job. And I may be, you know, changing the I'm gonna bill by a certain pay ID. And then down below I want to be able to put in a unit price. So here I'm going to go to the to the table. I'll put in my job number. I'll put in my pay ID, which I need to make sure that that is the right one. We'll use that one. And then I'm going to bill, regardless of, of who they are, if they work on that job, I'm going to bill at $100 an hour. Okay. So I'm not I'm not passing through. What I paid the employee, I'm going to mark up their hours uh, to $100 an hour to bill. Okay. So again, on this screen, I am setting up individual rates for each of the, of the six different cost types. I'm telling it with an effective date when those rates begin. I can put in an ending date of when those rates should stop. I'm building a criteria of what the line item needs to match in order for this rate table to be applied. And then down below, because I've, I've chosen unit cost, I'm, up, I'm um, setting up the, uh, the billing rate that I want to use. All right, then down below here, I'm going to come back into contracts. So again, for each item, I can select labor and I can select uh, material. Now when you use your browse key it's only going to show you <clears throat> the rate tables that you have set up for those specific cost types. Notice when I look at the material one I don't see the labor. If I look at subcontract I only see subcontract. So up here I can go ahead and put in my markup table for class if I want to. So there it is. Okay. So again, one markup table per item, six rate tables per item potentially. Oh, 
Okay, back under setup, we have add-on tables. This is on page 11 in your book. So these are extra things that you want to um, add to a contract-based invoice or a quick bill invoice. So you might have different types of fees for different sections of the invoice, or you have something overall that you want to add to the bottom of the invoice, to the invoice total. So <clears throat> you see here that there's an amount type. If I click the drop down, you'll see the, the different sections that I can add to uh, and the invoice total. And if I want to add this to a contract based invoice. Now, in order for you to be able to set up an add-on table, you have to, to set up standard add-on items first. And you can either do that from here. Um, once you've created the table, you can use the standard items to add, or we can come back to setup and go to standard items first. And here's a, a list of the, um, the different, uh, or, I'm sorry, here's, if you use the drop down, these are the standard items that we've already set up in the sample uh, data. If you want to add a new one, you simply click on the little asterisk button here. Uh, call it, we'll call this class add on. We'll insert that. Say that this is a. Um, Oops. And we're going to go ahead and do it, just do a, a fee for labor here. Let's see. Actually, change this maybe to other. Um, we can pick an, uh, a GL account number for this. We'll just stick it to income. And then over here, whoop, what? Let's go with that one, okay. And then here on the units and the slash amounts, we can tell it we're gonna add an amount here and we're going to uh, put in $150, okay. And then back here under add-ons, we'll use the star button again, and we'll call this we'll call this a um, admin fee. Oops. We'll do a percent on this one. Okay. Whoops. Confusing myself here. Hold on. Add on tables. Here we go. Okay. So right here, this we're back to the add on table. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a class table here. And we'll call this class add on table. And you can see that my uh, items are here, so I can just go ahead and either double click <clears throat> or use the arrow. Okay, and that I can actually, if this is a cost, I'm sorry, if it's cost based or um, quick bill, if it's cost based, I can tell it where to put the uh, put the add on, or I can tell it to put it at the bottom. Or if I need this to go on my contract-based invoice, I can click contract-based. Okay. And again, I can add more add-ons to this just by clicking on the standard add-ons button at the bottom. Okay. So add-on tables can do both at the same time, or you can do standard items first, and then pull those in. Uh, um, into the add-on table. Okay. So 
note at, on page 14 in contract setup, each contract can only have one add-on table. And that table is not at the item level. If we take a look here, it's at the contract level, and it's on the billing tab, and it's right here where it says add-on table. You just browse there, and you should be able to see the, uh, your add-on table there. Now the last thing I want to show you here, um, let me close out of here, is the uh, invoice designs. So under tools, you have invoice formats. that you can access um, at any time. If you want to see what the invoice, invoice formats look like, <clears throat> click the drop down here. These are the standard crystal reports that Sage sends uh, with the software. Uh, you'll need to know the billing type. So if, you're, if your billing type says cost-based, um, and actually, I think it doesn't matter here. Let me change this to contract. This, this list is the same regardless. So regardless of the billing type, you just need to look at the description to determine which one is which. The, um, the jobs with amounts and quantities, those are time and material. So, uh, so are all of these. The ones that say PB, that have PB in the description, those are progress bill um, type designs. So just look to the description um, that they've got in here so you, that you should be able to tell uh, which is which. And then all you need to do is highlight the one that you think you might like. You'll see the design name here. This is the crystal design that's linked to this uh, uh, invoice format. And then you can do a preview here. And this will run off the sample data. And it will give you an idea of what the report is going to actually look look like. And I've got some samples in your uh, handout there. The bottom of page 17 is the um, lump sum design. Page 18 is the jobs with quantities. Um, page 19 is a, uh, is, is a progress bill. This is um, stored materials. And then it, it, uh, it actually has a second page that gives you a list of the, of the items kind of similar to an AIA form. Okay. So again, this is just a, a preview of the, um, the jobs with amounts you know, and kind of what it looks like. So you can, re you can view any of these designs and decide which ones uh, come close to what you're looking for. And then any of these can be modified with the Crystal Report Designer. Um, you just need to b make sure if you if you copy this design to a new name and then you go in and make changes with Crystal, you need to make sure that you come in here under Invoice Formats, pull up the format, use the Browse button here, and go out and lock in your new Crystal name. The, the design name itself is not what's stored on the contract. If we look at the contract, On each line item on the billing tab, the format here is what matches this invoice format name back here. So this design or this format name here is linked to the format name here, which holds the design name. So just be sure if you, like I said, if you're doing any modifications or changes, uh, you made copies or you have a brand new crystal design that you're using, make sure that you've got the right design name on the invoice format inside billing. Okay, so that takes us through all the areas. Oh, come on. 
should have waited. That takes us through all the areas under setup inside billing. From the, all the, the different tables, um, and then the add-ons, the standard items, and then the invoice formats. So let's go ahead now, we're going to jump to workflow. And we're going to take a look at what's here under tasks. Okay. So right at the top is your quick bill um, invoice. Okay. So here what you can do is you can set up um, or, or enter here in the grid the, the things that you want to print on a quick bill invoice. This particular job does not is set up to not be a contract type job. Okay. So quick bill is only used uh, if your job is marked as as use quick bill. Um, here at the top, you'll fill in the customer, the job number, uh, the dates. It'll pull billing information, job information for you. And then down on the grid, you'll enter in uh, the information to print on that invoice. So a couple things to point out here. I'm not going to spend too much time in quick bill because we're, our, our main focus here is the contract based. If you right click up here in the header, in any column heading, you have hide show columns. So you can, this is set to print all, the, all of the columns. If you don't want all the columns, just uncheck the ones that you don't want. Okay. We can pull standard items in, which is what we did here. It pulls in the item, it pulls in the description. Uh, we put in the units, we can tell it to uh, show us the, the, the price and then it will do the extension for us. Okay. The invoice form, the other thing I want to point out, is either unit-based or non-unit-based or reten retention. So you have a choice here up at the top of, of three different types of um, forms that you want to actually create. Okay. Now, that's the other thing I want to point out here. Let me finish out of here and show you for Quick Bill. Quick Bill does not use a crystal report design. It uses a Sage invoice. And that is locked in here under BL settings. So you have a unit-based, a non-unit-based, and a retention form. <clears throat> What most people will do, because these, these are not very pretty looking invoice designs, is they will go ahead and they will print the invoice to get the invoice number assigned. But they don't use these, uh, they'll, they'll send this result to a print file that they're not really going to use. Uh, once you have the invoice printed, you can put activate a crystal design under your reports dropdown. And you can go ahead maybe have it here under, under Quick Bill Invoices, add it in here, you can reprint that invoice to a crystal design. So it can be a much nicer looking invoice, maybe put your logo in there, draw some boxes and, and, and such. Uh, so even though you're entering it as a Quick Bill, you're not actually going to use the, the uh, standard reports that come from Sage. You might have a crystal design uh, created that you're going to reprint instead. Okay, the, um, so it will keep track of your amounts down here at the bottom. If you are doing tax, it'll be here. Any retainage will, will show up here. Uh, your buttons on the side, your print invoice, you need to print the invoice first, and it'll assign an invoice number to it. And then you'll see printed here, and you'll see the invoice number uh, pop in. So I can reprint this invoice number with a crystal design. Okay, and on, on page seven in your handout is the, uh, an example of what the, the uh, SAGE report looks like. And again, like I said, that's not, it's an RD report, so it's not, um, the prettiest of invoice designs. All 
All right, let's take a look now at a contract-based invoice. So your, con your contract-based invoices will show up here in the window. You simply select the one that you want to, uh, to bill, click OK. Now, in order for the contract to actually show up on that previous list, the contract has to be approved. And the items within the contract have to be approved. Okay. And you have to have a billing worksheet on the contract as well. So let's look at the uh, contract real quick here. Let me close out of here. Open this one up. I hope it'll open even though it's in use. Yep. Okay. So my contract's approved. I have a billing worksheet locked in. Okay. Those are the two things that will, will prevent you from uh, billing a contract uh, uh, a, co a contract job. <laughs> so you've got the contract set up, but you're missing one of these two things. You won't be able to see it back here in, in billing. Okay. Now, once, you're, once you have this up on the worksheet, very simple. All you do is come across on each item. The column that says work completed this period, you put in the amount or you can use the, the percent billed. So let's do, I opened that up while I had the contract open, sorry. So I might want to bill 25% here. So instead of entering a work completed this period, I put a percent in. So you have a choice of, of either one. Okay. And then whichever one you choose, the other one will populate. And then you'll see uh, a balance to finish column. Uh, if you've got retainage being held, it, that'll automatically calculate and you'll have totals that are down here at the bottom. Okay. So I can go ahead and, and you know, finish this. If you've got multiple contracts to bill, all you have to do is, once you've got one done, uh, come back up here and select the next contract. And then you can open up another contract and, and put your amounts to, uh, amounts to bill. So you don't have to go in and out of this program. Use the Select Contract button to move around between, <clears throat> between the invoices. OK, once you've started this, if you get in here and decide, oops, this is not what I wanted, this has actually started a, an invoice in the background. You can click the Delete Invoice button. Yes. And then I can come back. And if I select it again, it's it's blank. Okay. So again, I can put in some amounts and maybe a percent. Okay. The synchronize button, if you make any changes, if you start up an invoice and then you make changes to that contract, you might change the format, you might have changed something on the uh, uh, contract amount, potentially, this Synchronize Entries button will synchronize this invoice back to the changes that you've made on the contract. Okay. And you'll get this, once it's done, you'll get this message. Okay. Now, for printing, for the, for the contract based, you have a preview, you have a draft, and you have a final. So at this point, you could print drafts, and then you could come back later after those have been approved, and you can print final, or you can print preview to the screen. Whoops. Well, why did you do that? Let me finish out of here. Let me come back here. Let me try that again. Do a preview. Sometimes 
because I made a change to the contract. Shoot. We're not going to be able to see that particular invoice is on page 10 um, in your handout. Um, let me select a different contract. Let's see if this one will actually print preview. I had actually reviewed that before our class, and huh, I think it's because I had made a change to the contract while I had it open in there, so that's probably wasn't the most brilliant thing to do. Okay, so this one does give me a, a preview, so I can, I can take a look at it this way, and then once, once it, uh, it, it's either been approved by someone else, or I've looked it over, and I've like what it looks like, then what I need to do is print a final. <clears throat> so this is the step that's going to assign an invoice number and a draw number and an invoice date, okay, which will default to the system date. You need to make sure that that falls within the, the correct month for the invoice. Let's see, make sure this is going to print to file. I'll print that to file. Now, once that's done, then I'm able to post that invoice over to Accounts Receivable. Okay. So, again, on all of these, um, they all have to be final printed. So, the quick bill has to be printed, the contract ba based invoice has to be final printed, as well as your cost based invoice, which is what we're going to look at next. So, in order to run this this post invoices routine, I have to have final printed all three of those invoice types. Now, for the cost-based invoices, there's a little bit more to it. Um, the steps here are first to generate work in progress. Now, you should have your, your interface to billing in accounts payable, payroll, job cost, all set to automatically post to billing. That's the generate work in progress step. If you had entries come across and they were not generated, they're still sitting in the new.blt file, you'll need to run this step manually. If you have information that has been generated but there was something wrong, maybe the rate table was incorrect, then you're going to run regenerate work in progress. That will take those items that are sitting in the unbill.blw file and it will reprocess those entries against the markup tables and the rate tables that are on the contract. If you want to look at what's out there and maybe manually make changes, you can come in with change uh, work in progress and it will show you the line items uh, detail that have come across from the other applications. So in this example, I've got some labor that came across, um, some burden that came across here, and I can see, um, uh, again, the cost types. I can see the categories, uh, the cost codes that were used. These are all payroll entries that came across from payroll. Okay. And I can actually, you know, delete stuff out of here if I decide, well, you know what, I don't want that to be billed. Maybe I'm not going to bill these last three lines of burden. So I can actually highlight the line and I can delete the row. So I can delete these three out. Maybe I don't want them. They got in there by mistake. And all I'm going to do is bill for the, the actual labor. Now, once the work in progress is the way you want it, we have to run a second step to generate the actual invoice. So this is the step that's going to turn the WIP into an invoice. 
Now on this particular screen, we can, we can set a billing frequency. This is just a condition. The billing frequencies are set up in custom descriptions and you would actually put that on the contract. Uh, the default is all, so we're not actually using one, but we could set up some contracts to only bill on the 5th or the 10th or to bill each week. We'd have to put these values on the contract and then we would have to change this drop down when we actually uh, generate uh, the invoice. I'm going to put a date in here. I'm going to use my list button under, under customer and I'm going to grab where is AL? There we are. We'll grab this guy. And then the contract, again, I can hit the list. I'm just going to grab this one right here on the top. And then we'll go ahead and start. And then if I come back under cost based and go to change cost based invoices, I should be able to see there's my pending invoice right there on the bottom. Now there's a printout that is, let me close out of here for a second. This actually created a print file for us. If I go under here and go to generate cost base, there's our print file. So here is our, um, what it generated. Okay, so the two entries. And actually if I come back here, and I try to look at that, there's nothing there because it's, it, those WIP entries have been changed into um, invoice entries. Okay. Now, if I look at that, at that print file um, and I see something is wrong and I need to make changes to the work in progress first, and generate the invoice again. I'm going to come in with change cost-based invoices. And really the only thing that you can basically do with this is you can void it by changing the status here. Um, this is also where you can change stuff to approved. But really the, the main thing you're going to do here is you're going to void this invoice and then when you hit close it's going to ask you if you want to reinstate it so if I need to make changes to those entries after after the invoice was generated before it's printed um, or final printed I'm going to go ahead and reinstate those entries so see what it's saying here it's going to it's going to remove the invoice records and it's going to change the status back so I can do that, and now I can come back in here, and I can change the work in progress. It's actually put those entries back for me. So if I need to change any of this, maybe my billing rate here, I want to change it to $25 an hour temporarily on this one. I saw the numbers were, were wrong, so I can finish that. I have to come back under tasks and I have to re-generate the invoice. All right, so now if I come back and I take a look at this, it's back okay, with the correct price. All right, so the contract-based invoices, not quite as simple as the contract-based. The cost-based, we have to generate. We might have to regenerate if there were changes to any of the tables. We might have to go in and look at those entries and maybe make changes to them before we generate the invoice itself. And then if we find a, a correction, we go in with change cost-based invoice, void it and reinstate it, and start back up here with change work in progress. Oops. Okay. Now once 
that these steps have been done in a billing cycle, then you're going to go ahead and run print invoices. Now, notice in generate or change, there was no print routine. All it was doing was taking the WIP entries and moving them into an invoiced status. But it wasn't actually producing the invoice form. So once you've got the invoice generated for the cost-based invoices, you're going to come here to print invoices and you'll do a preview or a, or a draft to get um, a copy of what the invoice is going to look like. And then before you can post it, you have to run final. And when you run final, uh, again, that's when it assigns the invoice number. You assign the invoice date, put in a cutoff date, um, the status can be any of these uh, if you're set to print pending as well as approved. We'll grab our customer, our contract, and we don't need to put any of this in it that this can be uh, the invoice format will actually pull off of the contract itself or you can override that. And then you just hit the start, and that will go out and print a cost. Okay. Then at this point, the last step then is to actually run post invoices. So when you post your invoices, that is going to send the information to AR. So the only interface billing has going outward is accounts receivable. Once accounts receivable receives it, it turns around and sends information to job cost, general ledger, and contracts. So it's going to update the previously billed amounts on the contract itself. So billing will look to contracts. AR and job cost to get some of its information to actually create the invoice. But when you post, it does, it's not the one that, that actually updates those other modules. Accounts receivable is the one that turns it around and, and sends the information back to those other applications so that you're then ready for the next, um, for the next billing cycle. All right, you've got some inquiries in here that you can look at um, if you need to, uh, as far as invoices, work in progress. The one I'll point out here is transactions. This does not ask you for whether you want to do it by customer or contract, this or, or even the file that you want to run the, the transaction inquiry on. This only runs on the new.blt file. So if you're looking to see if you have any information left in that file, in that file, uh, this is the inquiry that you can use. Report-wise, um, you've got it broken down here by uh, contract-based or cost-based or quick bill. Um, again, I, if you're doing quick bills, you might look at, if you haven't already, look at a crystal design that you can reprint uh, your quick bill invoices with. Uh, lists. We'll, you can print out any of these tables um, if you need to get a hard copy of what's in any of the markup tables or rate tables or add-ons. Um, the list drop-down will do that for you. Now, if you need to reprint any of the, the uh, contract or cost-based invoices, look back here under Tasks, Print Invoices. There's your reprint option here. This doesn't do the quick bills. If you need to reprint a quick bill, do it from the report dropdown um, and pick the build.bli file. And that will allow you to reprint a quick bill invoice um, onto a, a crystal design. Okay. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the billing workflow.
So questions. Once you think if you have any think about if you have any questions, you can put the, type those into the to the chat box on the GoToMeeting. I've got some year-end reminders here um, to also point out to you while you're thinking about your questions. Um, Sage sent out an email on supported versions, so you need to be aware that 17.1 and 18.1 are the supported year-end uh, CRE versions. We're going to be holding some web classes on year-end procedures and the ATRIX forms. Uh, tentatively, right now, we're looking at November 27th for the first year in procedures class. We will repeat that on December 18 if you can't make it to the first one. And then we're doing an ATRIX form review on December 11. So the year in procedures class will be covering each of the application's um, closings. So backups, close year, uh, any you know, other types of things that need that go along with a year in process. The ATRIX form review, that's where we're going to cover W-2s um, and 1099s. So we've kind of broken it up. Uh, it makes the session kind of ex extra long if we try to combine the two together. So we, we, we're breaking these up into two parts. So uh, you might want to mark your calendar just in, you know, in case you need to, uh, to re-attend one of these. That would, we would love to have you. All right, so Tina, are there any, have, does anybody have any questions? Uh, nope, I don't see any questions. Okay, we'll maybe give them a minute. Okay, so if nope. nothing, nope, nothing is coming through. Okay, it was kind of a uh, kind of a fast session uh, there between the setup and the workflow. Um, if you think of anything later, uh, please email Tina, and she will uh, forward that on to me, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have um, in in actually any of the areas. So billing setup or workflow or contract setup. If you have any questions in that area. Uh, please let us know, and we'll we'll be happy to help. So thanks for joining us, and I hope to to see you guys in one of the year end classes that we have coming up. Um, and until then, uh, please take care. <laughs>